government affirmed to have Gamberga's commitment to choose this fight how to constant breaches. The unprecedented healthy escalation in Madrid undermines all peace efforts. The United Nations and Netherlands seek to avert the imminent environmental disaster of safer tanker in Yemen. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Rushen Fuad. The UN envoy to Yemen, Hans Gornberg, arrived in the temporary capital, Aden, today in a new effort to discuss prospects for peace, which is being obstructed by the Iranian-backed Houthi militia. The UN envoy met with Rashad Al Alimi, the head of the Presidential Leadership Council, to discuss the latest developments on the Yemeni arena related to the peace process and the truce. Al Alimi affirmed his support for the truce in all its positions, including opening roads to the besieged city of Taiz by the Houthi militia. The head of the PLC reiterated the readiness of the government to provide everything necessary in order to facilitate the success of the UN efforts to bring peace to Yemen. Media sources revealed that mediation efforts failed to achieve consensus regarding opening the roads to ties west of Yemen. The sources confirmed that the mediation between the government and the houses stopped as the government demanded the priority of opening a road in the east of the city of Taiz towards the capital Sana'a, while the houses insisted on the priority of opening a road towards the ports of Hodeida. The long besieged city of Taiz was cut off from the world in 2015, soon after fighting broke out in Yemen. The truce called for warring parties to reopen the main roads into Taiz. This report has more details. Overloaded trucks and cars packed with families ply narrow Pombe mountain roads surrounding this Yemeni city, long besieged by Houthi militia, evidence that the terms of a truce have yet to be met. Announced just over a month ago, the truce called for warring parties to reopen the main roads into Taiz, a city of roughly 600,000 people in Yemen's southwest that has been largely cut off from the world since 2015. So far, however, those roads remain closed, meaning truck drivers and ordinary civilians have no choice but to seek out dangerous alternative routes prone to accidents and seemingly endless traffic jams. In normal times, one such road, known as al Aqrud, should allow drivers to reach the village of al Hauban east of Taiz in just 15 minutes. But now, the trip can take up to 8 hours. People are tired, especially children and women. We wait in traffic jams for 3 or 4 hours because of the narrowness of the road, a truck driver said. These days, People only use the road once or twice a week to avoid a rough journey that is compounded by the wear and tear on vehicles as well as the rising price of fuel. The two-month renewable truce began in early April, coinciding with the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. It has provided the country with a rare respite from violence. Less than a week after it took effect, Yemen's then-president Hadi announced he was handing over power to a new eight-man leadership council, fueling cautious optimism over a long-term ceasefire. The truce has also seen oil tankers arriving at the port of Hodeida, potentially easing fuel shortages in Sana'a and elsewhere. But a deal to resume commercial flights out of Sana'a airport for the first time in six years has yet to be materialised, with a planned inaugural flight in late April postponed indefinitely. Each side blames the other for the hold-up, and Taiz remains under siege to the dismay of civil society organisations. Each day, civilian victims fall on rugged mountain roads, more than a dozen groups said in a joint statement in April. The horrifying scenes of vehicles and trucks falling apart with people and goods are unspeakable.
the government forces record the 26 Houthi violations of the truce in the West Coast. The government forces added that the Houthi militia continues the mobilization of forces and it set up new sites and fortifications. Since the announcement of the UN truce, Houthi militia have continued to escalate the situation in various fronts deploying different weapons. This comes amid total governmental commitment to the truce. This report gives more details. The Iran-backed Houthi militia continues its violation of the truce through its military escalation south of Ma'rib Governorate. The militia carried out successive attacks over the past few days on several sites of the government forces and tribesmen, despite the latter commitment to the declared truce. The Houthis, however, escalated their attacks and violations by all types of weapons, such as motors and drones. <laughs> Our positions were attacked despite our commitment to the truce and conformity with the United Nations and the international community principles. As you can see, Houthis are amassing troops in the southern front of Mary. We will stick to our commitment to the truce, brokered by our political leadership. The truce was exploited by the Houthi militia for military mobilization and repositioning as well as to launch sporadic attacks on government positions in the southern fronts of Marib. The Houthi attacks prove that this militia doesn't believe in peace or dialogue. It only believes in force. We are ready and are vigil for them in any time or any place. Seven years of war and destruction have burdened the Yemeni people, while the Houthi militia is insisting on its racist approach and its destructive behavior for Yemen and the region in deviance to all efforts for peace sought by the international community. The UN and Netherlands will co-chair a pledging event for the UN coordinated plan to address safer tanker crisis. Safer is a decaying super tanker at risk of a major oil spill, which would result in a humanitarian and environmental catastrophe. The UN has a coordinated plan to address the threat. This report has more details. The conflict in Yemen has made all production and export operations related to safer tanker to be suspended, but nearly 1.1 million barrels of crude oil remain on board. Safer oil tanker has not been inspected or maintained since 2015, and this led to serious concerns about its integrity. Until now, there has been no oil leaking from the unit, but it's considered that the risk of an oil spill from the safer oil tanker is increasing as its structure, equipment, and operating systems continue to deteriorate. An oil spill from the safer oil tanker would be a major humanitarian and environmental disaster. A major spill could lead to a catastrophe in the northwestern coastline of Yemen, including the Yemeni Islands in the Red Sea and Qamran Island in particular. There is also a potential for oil to drift and impact neighboring countries, including Djibouti and Saudi Arabia. The reasons that could cause a spill from safer tanker could be the amount of oil spilled, the oil's weathering characteristics, and the oceanic conditions. Fisheries along Yemen's Red Sea coast will very certainly be badly harmed, causing hardship for fishing communities and significant economic losses. An oil spill may also cause major disruptions at the Hodeida port, which handles the majority of imported products. In addition, a major oil spill could impact many Yemeni coastal communities who already rely on humanitarian aid to meet their basic needs. Also, it would have a significant impact on the livelihoods and the health of the people relying on resources from the sea. 
A UN coordinated plan aims to address the threat with an overall cost of around $80 million. The plan includes two tracks that will run concurrently. It asks for a long term replacement for the old tanker to be installed within 18 months, as well as a four month emergency operation to move the oil to a safer temporary vessel, removing any immediate hazard. Both the FSO and the temporary vessel would remain in place until all the oil is transferred to the permanent replacement vessel. The FSO safer would then be towed to a yard and sold for salvage. For his part, <coughs> Achaim Steiner, the administrator at the United Nations Development Program, warned that safer oil tanker, which is one of the world's largest oil tankers, and may soon break apart, leak or explode. On May 11th, the Dutch government and the United Nations will co-host a pledging event to help avert a major potential environmental disaster off the coast of Yemen. Stranded off the Red Sea coast, the FSO Safa is one of the largest oil supertankers in the world. Carrying over one million barrels of oil, the vessel is now rapidly decaying. It may soon leak, break apart, or even explode. We must act quickly, or the world may have to contend with an oil spill four times larger than the 1989 Exxon Valdez spill. The environmental impact alone would be unprecedented, killing wildlife and devastating the Red Sea ecosystem. An oil spill of this magnitude would close the vital seaports of Hodeida and Salif, which millions of Yemeni citizens rely on for food and life-saving supplies. In a country already ravaged by seven years of war, it would also destroy hundreds of thousands of livelihoods, especially poor fishing communities in and around Hodeida. The consequence of such a disaster, where 19 million people suffer from severe food insecurity today, are difficult to fathom. That is why the United Nations and the United Nations Development Program are working closely with Yemen's UN resident and humanitarian coordinator and the government of the Netherlands to help Yemenis proactively avert an oil spill. This includes a UN coordinated strategy to address that threat, including a plan to transfer the oil from the FSO SAFA. We urgently need donor support to implement this delicate plan and prevent a potential catastrophe with global implications. Your commitment at this pledging conference and beyond will help ensure that Yemen can continue to move towards a more peaceful and more sustainable future for all. We cannot leave Yemen behind and we cannot risk such a disaster. Thank you for your support. Coming next. The United States has set up new ports in Middle East waters to combat smuggling arms to houses. Welcome back. The U.S. will establish a new multinational task force to patrol the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The task force will patrol the waterway between Egypt and Saudi Arabia through Bab el Mandeb Strait to the waters of the Yemen Oman border. This report has more details on this. The United States Navy announced the formation of a new multinational task force to combat arms smuggling in Yemeni waterways. The latest American military reaction to Houthi strikes on Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. 
The initiative comes in the wake of a series of Houthi missile and drone strikes on the two Gulf nations this year, who have received great American military aid but believe the U.S. is losing its commitment to the area. Vice Admiral Brad Cooper, commander of the United States 5th Fleet, said the task force will begin operations on Sunday in the Red Sea, Bab el Mandeb, and Gulf of Aden, targeting human trafficking as well as the smuggling of narcotics and other illicit items. These are strategically important waters that warrant our attention, Cooper told reporters. The task force would be made up of two to eight warships and would be part of the 34 nation combined maritime forces which Cooper also leads and which has three other task forces combating smuggling and piracy in adjacent waterways. When asked about the Houthis' use of missiles and drones to strike U.S. allies Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, Cooper said the new task force would limit the Houthis' capacity to procure such weapons. Cooper continued, We will be able to do it more vibrantly and directly than we do today. The waterways between Somalia, Djibouti, and Yemen, according to an anonymous U.S. official, are well-known smuggling corridors for weapons bound for the Houthis. The new international task group will undoubtedly look into this problem, the official added. Iran has long been suspected of transporting weapons to the Houthis, something it denies. Following Houthi strikes on the Gulf countries, the U.S. gave further military aid to Saudi Arabia and the UAE this year. However, diplomatic sources say the Gulf governments are still skeptical that the U.S. is committed to the area. The task force's formation coincides with the two-month truce in Yemen's almost seven-year war, which has killed tens of thousands of people and displaced millions more. The Houthi militia launched summer camps to recruit children. The Houthi militia began organizing its regular summer camps under the slogan Science and Jihad from various schools and mosques. Educational sources confirm that the militia are implementing an intensified propaganda through radio stations for the camps. This report has more details. The Houthi militia continues to ignore the truce and peace efforts, and they didn't contend only with this, but they are using children as a tool to implement their sectarian ideologies through summer centers to attract new fighters on its fronts. The summer centers have become a Houthi umbrella to deceive children and push them to their fronts in a crystal clear confirmation of the militia's bloody refusal to achieve a decisive peace that ends the suffering of Yemenis. But they even took the truce as an opportunity to take a breath and to search for new fighters, enhance its weapons and combat capabilities. While Yemenis are waiting for the opportunity to get out of the hell of war and end the suffering of millions of Yemenis, the Houthi militia continues to ignore the outstretched hands for dialogue, and they are dealing with the truce and peace efforts with a deaf ear. Despite the humanitarian appeals and the intense regional and international moves to persuade the militia to abandon its domination and prepare for a new phase of partnership. However, they are still working on their authoritarian project and they are mobilizing programs to control minds with the aim of preparing society to accept their hegemony and their sectarian state. Although the summer centers are known throughout the world as recreational incubators to make use of students' spare time in order to strengthen their scientific and moral lessons and develop their loyalty and sense of belonging to the homeland, the militia has turned them into a miniature version of their cultural courses that dedicate loyalty and holiness only to their leaders in the minds of children. Since the end of the educational lessons three months ago, the militia has taken advantage of the school holiday and the temporary truce to conduct intensive mobilization programs through the ministries of youth and sports, education, and the local administration, and it allocated billions of dollars to equip unnecessary summer centers instead of paying salaries for two million of its hungry employees. And they sent intensive messages through schools, communication sites, TV and radio programs, and even household gas supervisors in a fierce campaign calling on citizens to register for their children in these centers under the pretext of developing their scientific capabilities. And as soon as they join, they are surprised by a sectarian and mobilization culture that indulges poison and honey. In order to impose its domination, it uses many deceptive means of influence to dictate generations with its reckless ideas, for most of which is taking advantage of the school holidays and its summer centers 
which are distorted by its ideology to eliminate the national message and replace it with a foreign sectarian message. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Yemeni government affirms to House Gomberg its commitment to truth despite how to constant breaches. The unprecedented healthy escalation in Ma'arib undermines all peace efforts. The United Nations and Netherlands seek to avert the imminent environmental disaster of sapper tanker in Yemen. This is the end of the news. It was Roshan Fouet. Thank you for watching.